In today's video, we're going to discuss bartering. Hey everybody, got a blank screen in front of you. <laughs> But today we're going to talk about bartering. And I'm going to bring the items in one by one and show you and kind of give you some ideas of what I think about them and some pros and cons to them. And uh, this is basically an open source discussion. Um, if you folks find anything you feel better for bartering, feel free to mention it. If you think something I'm showing you here isn't good, feel free to mention that too. Um, bartering is a very personal thing. It's really up to the person. This is just to give you some basic ideas to start with. Okay, first thing I'm going to put up on the list could be controversial for some, maybe not for others. Booze. Uh, a lot of people are going to want to drink after things turn ugly. Unfortunately, some people are addicted to alcohol and will need a drink in order not to get uh, extremely sick and go into DTs. Um, basically, it's a darn good barter item. Uh, you know, I'm kind of conflicted in some ways because I feel like, you know, maybe I'm taking advantage of somebody who's an alcoholic. But it's something you got to think about. If your family comes first in a disaster, we'll go with the booze. Okay. That's the first item. Second item, cigarettes. Yeah, I'm one of those evil smokers out there. Let's get that out of the way to begin with. <laughs> I got enough stockpile for myself. I have tubes. I have tobacco put away. I even have tobacco seeds, although I haven't had luck rolling them out here. Um, but this is probably one of the number one barter items you'll see people mention. Uh, again, you know, could be controversial for some. If you don't smoke, buy a couple cartons and put them away. You know, it's a good barter item. Remember, we're talking survival here. We're not talk talking morals or, you know, I feel that I shouldn't be contributing to somebody's cigarette habit. We're talking about survival. So we got booze and cigarettes. We got those out of the way first. They're probably the most controversial. All right, next thing, batteries. Now some of these items are just representations. Um, I just happened to grab these out of my battery stash. I've got loads of other batteries, but this is just a representation. A lot of people don't have a lot of batteries put away. Um, I tend to rotate mine. I keep a good, fresh supply put away. And batteries are a good thing to barter with. You know, if somebody wants to use something and, oh, I want to use the flashlight, batteries are dead, we don't have any. Well, there's your opportunity. So batteries are a good item. Next item, silver and gold. Again, these are just representations. You got silver around here and you got a one-tenth gold coin. Um, they're just the most simplest thing I could think of. You also have over here what's called junk silver, pre-1965. Silver coins, you can even, even sounds different when you hear it. Um, silver and gold, a lot of people will say, well, you can't eat that, so why are you storing it? Well, it's a store of wealth. Um, it's a long-term survival prep for me. You know, it's kind of something that I hold on to in the event that there is a economic crash and I want to hold on to some of my wealth because my cash may be worth nothing after that crash, but my silver and gold might be worth something. And it's also long-term. Um, nobody the day after some huge disaster is going to be out on the streets going, hey, who's got silver and gold? But two or three weeks down, if somebody wants something from you or you want something from somebody and they know the value of this, which is another problem we have in this world today because not a lot of people know the value of silver and gold, um, you might be able to barter with it. Again, just an idea. Uh, cleaning and sanitation supplies. Again, Purely representational, but you get the point. You got baby wipes, you got toilet paper, you got soap. Um, again, soap could be dish soap, soap could be uh, detergent for your laundry machine, soap could be for your washing machine, soap could be for your dishwasher. Um, any kind of soap you can think of, uh, shampoo, put it away. It's a good barter item. Some people are going to want to get clean, and your biggest enemy after a disaster situation is going to be infection and you want stuff to keep yourself clean. So if you have the means, by all means, put some away for barter. Uh, next thing, food. This again, representational of all food. 
because I don't live on a diet of these things. It was just the easiest to grab in my storeroom. Canned food, you know, put it away. Got some old MREs, keep them around. Good for barter, you know, if somebody's really hungry, if you want to get rid of someone, if you've got somebody coming around, you know, that maybe you don't trust and they're just like, look, man, just give me some food. Throw an MRE at him. Maybe you'll get rid of him. You won't have to deal with conflict. Um, I always try to tell people when in a survival situation, your best bet is to avoid all conflict, not stand outside of your house with your AR and your battle vest on, your battle belt on, looking for war. Sometimes a can of food makes for a whole simpler situation. Okay, next thing, money. Uh, money long term may not be worth anything, but for the immediate situation, it's probably pretty handy. Uh, in my situation here, we've lost the fiber optic lines to my town. We've lost power for days at a time. Um, no ATMs means no money. It also means that your debit cards in stores aren't any good either. So cash is a good way to, uh, if you might call it barter, quickly, you know, when things go down at the beginning. Um, you can take uh, cash with you anywhere pretty much and get what you want, as long as your cash has value. If it doesn't, that's when we go back to the silver and gold. Um, this is the way I pack my cash up. I like small bills. I start with the fives and singles, move up to tens and twenties, keep them in packs of a hundred for the smaller bills. It's waterproof. I can toss a few of these in my bug out bag and I'm out the door. All right, next up, this is kind of controversial for some people, ammo. Um, I'm going to advise you to be careful in bartering ammo. Know who you're bartering to. If you're bartering to your next door neighbor that's lived next to you for 10 years, a nice guy, never been a problem. Maybe he needs some ammo for self-defense. You know, he only had 20 rounds when this whole thing went down and he chased off looters last night. That's a different story than the random dude that comes to your door and says, hey man, do you have any ammo? I'll trade you my food. So you wanna be careful with bartering ammo. Um, some people make it a rule of thumb not to barter ammo at all. I would say be cautious with it. Uh, last thing, I mentioned money, but I forgot to mention this. Do you have any foreign currency? Our currency may collapse. I got some euros, I got some Canadian money. Again, just a representation of what I keep. Um, you know, again, that's a store of wealth. It's not really going to help you any in an immediate situation. But if your dollar crashes tomorrow and the euro is worth more, who knows? Maybe somebody would be willing to take euros off your hand instead of your American cash. Uh, lighters. I got a bunch of these stored away. Kind of goes with the cigarettes, but you know, for starting fires and everything, how many people that don't smoke have a lighter? Probably not many. And uh, propane, fuel, gasoline, again, a representation of that kind of a thing there. Uh, your propane, fuel, and gasoline. Let me get that up a little bit because it's kind of pulled down onto the front there. Um, if you're able to store it safely, it's a good thing to store, even camp fuel, even kerosene for lanterns. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's something you can barter with, even if you didn't store it to barter with. You know, it's just an idea. And lastly, we want to talk about water purification tablets. I don't have any here. Um, they were in my uh, other kits and I didn't dig them out. But water filters, maybe the water's bad. Maybe you can barter two gallons of clean water through your Berkey water filter for something. <clears throat> Lastly, medical supplies. You know, that's just a bandage there, but you know, maybe you have enough. Maybe you have extra. Maybe you have stuff. Um, I have stuff that was given to me from somebody who cleared out um, a hospital that was closing, and it's all just over the counter stuff. It's nothing, you know, all that exciting, but it's stuff that, you know, old bandages and stuff that are technically expired. But let me tell you, I wouldn't hesitate to put it on my finger if I had a cut that I didn't want to get infected. So medical supplies are another consideration. And probably the last and most important one that we're all kind of working on is skills. What can you barter um, for skill-wise that somebody would want? Can you build things? Can you fix cars? I mean, you know, I can fix guns. I can refinish them. I can do small engine repair. I can, well, you saw my stove last week. Uh, I'm familiar with electricity and solar and communications with ham radio. You know, these are skills that you want to build up now. Maybe you can teach people how to build fires with a flint, uh, with a ferro rod and a steel. So just something to think about. 
Um, if you guys come up with better ideas, <coughs> excuse me, by all means, you know, mention them. I want to kind of try to get a list of things that you think you could barter over time with. Um, and that's pretty much it for the day. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click like. And we'll be back soon with another video.